is it important to maintain maintain ties alive or is it okay to let them kind of drift and uh, we awaken them whenever needed and you speak to this in many if for many angles in your book you want to share with everybody how do you think about that should they go off and kind of do the maintenance do the uh, network maintenance literally you take the car to the damn garage to to change the oil and whatever you do uh, or or is it is it really um, overblown that concern about maintenance yeah i mean i would argue that maintaining your network is a far more effective and more important strategy than growing your network. So when people think about networking, they're often thinking about meeting new people and growing their network. But for the vast majority of outcomes that you would care about, whether it's mental health and well-being, professional advancement, um, physical health, it's actually not how many people you know, right? It's instead having a high quality ties in the structure of your relationships. And that comes from maintaining existing relationships. Um, we know that relationships rapidly decay. So after five months, feelings of closeness between non-family, um, non-family relationships will drop by close to 80%. So there's a massive decay in how close we feel to people. Um, so maintaining those ties is really important. There's also great work that was done um, by Dan Levin and his colleagues, which has shown exactly what you said, that there's huge value also from an innovation and creativity standpoint about reconnecting with people that you may not have seen for two or three years. Um, so there's a lot of existing value that's untapped within your network. So reaching out to people you already know can be one of the most effective strategies for rekindling your network. And one thing that I have found particularly interesting, I would love to hear how you've thought about this, is um, thinking about what's happened to our networks during COVID. So my colleagues and I have been trying to, we looked at people's networks in 2019 and then again in the middle of COVID. And what we found is that networks have actually shrunk. So if you look at the overall size of someone's network, it's shrunk by close to 17% or 250 people. Um, and that speaks right that we're into this idea that we're in a moment of just social disconnection. Um, so that important, that is incredibly important, particularly right now to be reconnecting. Um, but what's particularly interesting, I would love your take on this, is that that effect is almost entirely driven by the reduction in the size of men's networks. So women's networks haven't shrank at all. Interesting. <laughs> I didn't know this, so thank you for for the the bit <laughs> the bit of of new information there. Um, yeah, I, the, the gender effects are kind of interesting because uh, it, it, for some fundamental things about networks. I haven't found gender effects. When I look at really basic, basic behavior, like you know, how much do you, uh, how much, how much uh, discomfort do you feel when you net to professionally? Zero gender difference. Uh, when it comes to how much you value the competence of a work partner versus how much you like him personally to decide to work with them, zero gender difference. But they, there are twists like the one you're describing, where we find we find that it's not at all the case that we, women actually are, are behaving differently in this particular set of circumstances. 